So what do you think about uh, the game? I loved the game. Um, for the most part. There were a few confusing parts that I wasn't particularly, didn't particularly care for. One was the time element. You have several different games which use this little time, different time cards that each have a different time on it and you go through it really quick and you have to remember what times you saw and what times you didn't and how many times you saw it and it gets really confusing and it's kind of hard to keep track of especially with as fast as you're going. Three of each time period and only one's missing. Yeah, the uh, game comes with uh, a lot more um, components uh, for the crime scene than, than the game Clue and it's a lot harder to um, make your assumptions in the game as, as well. For one, you have the motive, which in this case I have the greed. You have the location, which is, this one's a smoking car. You have the suspect, which is Professor Karlov, which is the, um, the green cards. And then you also got the modus uh, operandi, which is the motive, the murdering. This was the hang being hanged. And then, of course, you have the time cards. And there's 24 of those, and of course only, and just like Clue, one of each of these cards are going to be shuffled along with one of the time zones. Now the time ones, like she was saying, is a memory game. You only see them at certain parts of the game. So, like three times for the entire game, so you're, you're really not going to be um, being able to identify them just because, unless you have a photographic memory. And the components are really nice to the game. You have... Um, these uh, pawn pieces that are represent bust representations of your characters and by color. So not only do you have the color, and then there's a little mini game that you can play with this baggage where you put uh, in one hand and your the player has to decide which hand it is. This is a uh, kind of a uh, gimmicky 50-50 uh, uh, um, chance of getting on uh, the baggage, but it's but it's kind of a uh, nice balance because. Uh, the power you get for getting this right is getting one card of your choice from that player. So, which you won once on which yesterday I, yeah, and won. lost once on yesterday. So it's a 50-50. And then another nice thing is uh, you got a little whistle here, and every round, someone, the, the person that um, the game has a weird way of identifying who goes first in the game is whoever ridden the train most recently. And while well, with us, it's it was like okay. Uh, so it came down to me just playing first. And then once everyone goes, the person that played last gets the whistle and they start the round. I like how they're made. They're really good quality plastic. It's not these cheap cardboard things. I mean, the cost of the game really is worth it for what you get. Um, with that little character like he was showing you, um, this is your character card. This character card gives different players different special powers. For example, this one is Archibald Mansard, and his special power is once per turn, he can peek at one suspect green card, which is in your hand. Uh, it's actually one that's going to be in the discard pile, because after you show a player your a particular card that they ask for, they'll put it in a discard pile. And if he just got done playing and he has a green one, I can ask him as my special power to be able to see that green card that he just put down, which is really, really nice. And you can do it for any of the characters. Um, there's one other card in there that's an orange card. That one gets a one-hour time bonus. It doesn't get the special power, but it still gets a one-hour time bonus. So if you have four hours, it, they actually have five. Yeah, this game, unlike Clue, where you roll dice and move that many pieces to that um, location, it, it eliminated the fact that when you had people constantly, you're trying to get to a building because you're trying to find out if that uh, room in that building was the murder room. And then you have another player that keeps pulling you away from that room when they know it's that right room or they're trying to get to it first. You know, there's that going on in Clue. This one, you don't have that. Everyone has a separate turn. They have so many hours to spend. And it's based on the um, on the board on each each action in the game, depending on how how um, how long it should take in the game. You have anywhere from one hours 
to up to four hours of actual hours, depending on which actions you do. So each action has their own way of actually having you gain access to the clue cards. This little token you would use on top, we were using it on top of our discard pile, and every time you use your special power, you just flip it over to the other side so you know that you use that special power also. But I will stress, this game is a lot harder than Clue because there's not one of each card, but two of each card, with the exception of the time clock, which there's three. So, you could actually, you know, each round, see the exact per same person, the exact same card over and over again, but, but not in the same round. So you, you have to basically find a way to um, see the same card twice, whether you have one copy in your hand and hope to see another player's uh, card of the same one to completely eliminate it. Because you're going to be doing a lot of pass. In this game, you do a lot of passing around cards. What's really nice is in your little character cards, they give you all the different games, that you can, different things you can play, different cards you can go to, how many hours it's going to take, and it's nicely laid out here so you don't have to reference the book constantly. You have it right here, and we check back with it quite often during our game, um, just referencing, say for instance, we went to the dining car, the dining car, uh, the designated player must show you one card from their hand of, hand of a crime category of your choice. Uh, and if you do multiple people, then each person has to have a different category. So, like, I might ask him for uh, a motive card, and then if I went and spent another hour and used, asked one of my other friends, I would have to ask them for... Um, a suspect card. I couldn't ask the same, you know, different people the same particular card. Each person that I asked, I would waste an hour for, but I would have to ask them for a separate type of card, different category. And then there's a nice thing in the game where the conductor is uh, randomly generated each turn where he's going to go. So, speaking with the conductor allows you to have access to three different cards that are on here. So when you look at one, you're going to take the card and you're going to put it in your hand and then look at it, mark it off, and then put it in your discard pile, and then you replace it with another one. So this is these become really important because if you notice that none of them have been touched, you can guarantee that they're the, uh, they're, they've been there and not been moved around. Uh, then you have passengers that come out in the game. Um, when passenger one comes on, you can look at one card from the deck, and then it, you take it and keep it. And um, same with when Pastor 2 comes on, you can then look at Pastor 1 or 2. So it's real nice how it works out. So the game's really hard uh, compared to this clue. It's a family game still, but at the same time, I would think it's a much more uh, involved than clue. Much, much less luck and more on actually uh, thinking of how you're going to go about get, gathering the information. Because if you don't pick the right... Um, cards go to at the, the right time, you're, you're, ho you're hosing yourself. I mean, eight, nine years old, that would be fine on up. But, I mean, we were all 20 to 30-somethings, and we just had a blast with it. Especially since you can uh, kind of rip some people off a little bit. I mean, it's not too much um, messing with each other, but... No, you just get to keep showing the same card to them every turn. That they ask for that card for that other type, but a lot of times you lose track of what you showed them anyway. So yeah, because you're you're passing cards back and forth. There's like it's funny because you're gonna like oh this card says take this card and take keep it pass another one. So you're constantly putting stuff in your discard pile. So at least it's nice in that way, not like Clue where someone asks you for the uh, when you go to at, uh, pull up that stupid murder thing. They always show you the same. Um, Thing oh uh, do you have Professor Plum in the in the hall with the wrench and they always show you the wrench even though you know it's not the wrench they show oh yeah I, it and it was driving me nuts because she kept showing the same card and I never realized that she had two of the same card and it was I was going crazy and <laughs> I'm like okay this has got to be a person I've only seen this card once and I just I never realized that she had the same card twice it just didn't dawn on me yeah. So with so much more um, going on, unlike the other difference, significant difference with this and Clue, 
is everybody guesses the murder at the same time. Well, thanks again. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, segment, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.